Hey everyone, this is Mr. Wister again. This is our last lesson in the unit on using conditional statements. We're going to talk about how to use the else if statement to create multi way branching conditionals. So, we're going to talk about what the purpose of else if is, and then how the syntax works, and some strategies for figuring out how to use it effectively. So, again, just to review, we've been talking in this whole unit about how to use if statements to do conditional execution. And the way that works is uh, your program performs some sort of a Boolean expression which evaluates the true or false inside the parentheses. And if it's true, then the code that's inside the curly braces under if runs. And if it's false, then the code underneath the else uh, runs if you decide to include else. And so far, we've really only been able to create um, conditional blocks of code that involve one alternative or two alternatives. But with else if, we're going to be able to write um, conditional blocks that involve more than two choices or conditional blocks where you have to have two separate tests instead of just one test. So like it says, uh, like I just said, uh, the purpose of using else if is it allows us to consider multiple alternatives where we can have multiple conditions that we're going to test. The way that it works is um, you write a conditional block with an if statement at first just like you've always done and then underneath that, you put one or more else if statements um, that also have Boolean conditions involved in them. And what happens in your program when it runs is it essentially it searches through all of those Boolean tests in order, and it finds the first one that's true. And whichever one matches true first is the code that gets run, and then your program skips all the other ones. So if you have a block of code with five uh, boolean tests and the third one is true then the fourth and fifth ones are just going to get skipped and the else is going to get skipped too you can use else with else ifs but the only time that the code under the else runs is if all of the other boolean tests are false so it really at that point is sort of a catch-all um, default condition um, that runs when nothing else is true the syntax looks kind of like this. Again, we just talked about you start off with if, just like always, and then you have else if right underneath that. Notice that there's a space between the word else and if in Java. Um, notice that you have to have a Boolean condition after the if, just like for all the other ones. You don't have to have a space there. Um, I don't know why I put that in, but you don't need to have a space. Um, and then you can optionally um, include an else block at the bottom but you don't have to. If you just have two conditions that you need to test, then you can just have if, if and else if and be done with it. If you want to have more than two conditions, you just add another else if, and you can have as many as you want uh, within the same conditional block. A couple of tips for thinking about how to use them effectively. Um, if you're going to test more than one condition, you have to use else if. Uh, if you want the conditions to be related to each other. Make sure, this is really important, when we first did our lesson on if statements, we said we wanted to make sure that they were mutually exclusive and exhaustive. And that's really important here in both cases. Because um, if you're going to use uh, else if, you need to make sure that all of your tests are mutually exclusive, because only one of them is ever going to run. So if you were to write a test where it's possible for, say, two out of the five conditions to be true, then you'd have a logical error because one of them wouldn't actually run. Also, this is where it becomes really important that your test is exhaustive. Um, you want to make sure that if your program runs the code inside the else, that you're really sure that you didn't have anything else that you should have tested. So just make sure that all of your else ifs really cover all of the possible conditions that could be true when you start creating more complicated multi-way conditional statements like this. So let's take a look at a quick example in JGrasp. Um, we're not going to write code, but we're going to run it through the debugger to see what happens. So here I've got a program where we have a method called getGrade, which takes your number grade and converts it to a letter grade. Um, and we have a bunch of else ifs here. Notice that the way that this code is written, technically speaking, if your score is greater than or equal to 90, it's also greater than or equal to 70, but that's not going to matter at that point because of the way else if works. If we match it to A, 
it's never going to see this code. So we don't really have to worry about um, more than one of those conditions being true as long as you do them in the right order. If we were to flip this around and do it from F to A, we would have a problem because we would never match A because if it's uh, uh, greater than or equal to 90, it's also greater than or equal to 60. Okay, so and here's what our program does when it runs. So let's put in a breakpoint here and then we'll run it through the debugger just so you can see an illustration of that happening. So here we are. Let's step into our program. Notice that our parameter is 87. That's our value for score, so let's see what happens. So we create a local variable. We're going to do our first test. Is 87 greater than or equal to 90? No. So we're going to jump down to the second one. Is 87 greater than or equal to 80? Yes. So we're going to jump into the code. We're going to set the value of grade equal to B, and then we're going to skip to the bottom. Because remember, as soon as you match your first else if statement, everything else in that conditional block gets ignored. And then lastly, we're going to return the value of grade, which is the letter B, and that's what we're going to print, and so we print the correct answer, and then we're done. Okay, so in this lesson we talked about um, how we can use else if statements to write multi-way conditional blocks. Uh, we talked about how important it is that these blocks, uh, that the conditions be both mutually exclusive and exhaustive. Uh, we also talked about the syntax of else if, and how you need to make sure to include a condition for each if. So you're all set.